back with Veterans in Politics. Uh, before we get into our rants, um, I just want to say that we're going to have John Bonaventura, who is the Las Vegas Township Constable. He's going to be on our program for a full hour. And uh, we're joined today by Andre Haynes and uh, Buford Davis. Uh, Buford is a reporter for the Henderson Press. So it's going to be a very, very, very exciting uh, one-hour show. Guys, have any rants? Oh, yeah. Got a few. All right. Go ahead, Andre. One, one of mine that, that I found pretty interesting, recently in an, in, a, uh, in an article written by Tom in the LVRJ, he commented on Reed wanting to change the name of McCarran International Airport. And one of the quotes that uh, Reed said is, Pat McCarran was one of the most anti-Semitic, one of the most anti-black, one of the most prejudiced people ever to serve in the Senate. I don't think his name should be on anything. I say get rid of all those racial, r- racist, <laughs> racial people. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I found it quite quite interesting. I mean, I'm aware that he uh, helped pass some laws and introduce some things right. as far as aeronautics right. are concerned. But when you look at the past of Las Vegas, the Iron Curtain, and what happened with the West Side, uh-huh. and you know, you think about the performers like Sammy Davis and Junior, who perform at the Desert Inn, but they had to go stay at the Moulin Rouge. Uh-huh. I don't. I understand why the the Clark County Commission did what they did in the 60s, right. which is when they changed the name to be McCarran Airport. But the present commissioners, especially now that we have a black commissioner, you know, for the county. Who's that? Uh, Lawrence Weekly, I believe. Oh. He was city, and now I believe he's on the Clark County Commission. Lawrence Weekly's black? <laughs> oh, crap. He, he's one of us. He's a brother. Oh, okay. But why hasn't that been addressed? Why didn't anybody change it? I mean, you, you, you think about the uh, the NFL and some of your Native Americans complaining about the Washington Redskins right. and some of the names, you know, that are uh, racial slurs towards them. Well, why hasn't anybody spoken up for our international airport, the airport that everyone comes right. to? And Well, you know what? They, they figured time will, will bury um, um, past history so people won't know exactly uh, where that name came from, and and uh, the 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 person that had that name, um, what his relationship was in in the in the black community, so to speak, or in any community yeah, for that pe- matter. People people never forget, man. That's I true. mean, I mean, come on. If we go back and you think about Attila the Hun or Hitler or some of yeah, the but, other but people. a lot of people don't know who who McCarran is. I'm t- uh, Hitler. Everybody knows who that is, but yeah. nobody knows who, who McCarran is. They so, just knows the airport. Yeah. So what do you, what what do you, what do you think the commission should do? Change the name. What what do you say? Buford? Uh, maybe change the name, but if you start doing that, you definitely will be getting some serious name change throughout the county and but nation. Is, but 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 is that right? Is that fair? I mean, it, it, even if we have to undo everything because the way the way it was done in the past, it was permissible at that time. But now being considerate for all people, whether you're black, Hispanic, Jewish, Caucasian, doesn't matter. Is it okay to let something remain that is disrespectful? I don't think so. I think that you need to assess people's legacy. Not to be, rev- you know, revise history, but to look at it in a contemporary setting, and is this appropriate? Um, I-, I honestly don't know enough about Mr. McCarran to to say at this point. But if what, you know, you just said is true, I would be in yeah. favor of changing the name. And that's, you know, what I read was a quote that Harry Reid said. And I yeah. think yeah. I think we could take that to the bank. That is pretty credible. Yeah. You know, I, I think it is because I, I heard something of that uh, nature from other folks myself. Yeah, I mean, and initially when I heard um, that people wanted the name changed, it was related to tourism. Right. They they were hoping that it would increase our you tourism. know right you know hotels, airfare, etc. But you know, in a recent article, Reed, to my knowledge, was the first one that came out and okay. said, "Never mind tourism. This is why we should change the name." You, you know what? You know what? We're, we're changing. And uh, I, I noticed that a lot of things are, are changing. Look at the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, for example. Um, they're they're getting their officers through the uh, crisis awareness. Um, yeah, I read about uh, that intervention program. They're they're training them. Look look at that one officer. Um, they're starting to call SWAT up now mm-hmm. to to come to intervene. You know, look at that one 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 guy that was sleeping in his car. And the cops came over to ask him to uh, come out of his car, and he started shooting everybody, or well, shooting at the police. And uh, he came out of it alive uh, four hours later. You know, um, I think all of this contribute to uh, Stanley Gibson, who, yeah, who definitely. was pinned in the car, couldn't definitely. go anywhere, 
didn't show a threat to anybody, yeah. didn't have a weapon, and was in there for 29 minutes, um, n- not even a good yeah. a- half an hour before he got shot dead, you know? Yeah. So I think Stanley Gibson saved this guy's life, and I think Stanley Gibson is going to save a lot of lives because there's a lot of changes that's going to go on. And uh, speaking of uh, 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 Stanley Gibson, I just wanted to say uh, um, his widow, uh, Rhonda Gibson, today gave me a plaque. And, wow. and, and, and this is the plaque that was given to Stanley Gibson. And, and it says, United States of America honors the memory of Stanley LaVon Gibson. This certificate is awarded by a grateful nation in recognition of devoted and selfless conservation to the service of our country in the armed forces of the United States of America. Signed, George W. Bush, President of the United States. And and she said that if anybody's going to get this, it, it should be you. And and me, me and Rhonda Gibson, we have a a love hate relationship. You know, there's, I'm not, I'm not on terms, a hundred percent with her all the time. But I, I still try to understand, or try to understand where she's coming from yeah. and, and and the pain that she's been uh, uh, living ever since December twelfth, uh, two thousand and eleven. Uh, and 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 I recognize that. And and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this get this officer jesus arvello uh prosecuted and and you know the da uh made it this may um well channel three said that the da is 99 percent uh certainty that he's going to prosecute this officer before the grand jury talking about uh wolfson yeah wolfson okay. and uh and and he also was on face to face uh last night making John. the same notion um he says that this officer's um actions is different from all the other officers that uh, that he has um, uh, 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 re- release mm-hmm. from from being um, convicted of any criminal uh, crime, and that's why he's skipping this officer to to take time to uh, look at it okay. a little bit more. And and I hope he comes up with the uh, with the verdict of of um, bringing this officer before the grand jury. The only thing I have not agreed with uh, Mr. Wilson since he took office. Was the kicking of that one uh, that Henderson cop, um, Sergeant Seacats or whatever mm-hmm. his name is? His name is Brett Seacats. Brett Seacats. The kicking of that one individual. But you know, I, I could look the other way for that one, as, as long as he does the right thing with, with, with all the rest. And, and apparently, he did the right thing with Kathleen Vermillion, and uh, he's not criminally prosecuting her. Although Mr. Um, uh, uh, Steve Sissel at the County Commission. Is upset he, he with, 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 the, with 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 the with the district attorney's decision not to prosecute Vermillion and the two other uh, folks right. that he wanted to prosecute. But you know something, Commissioner Sisolak. Now, now check this out. This man has sued Clark County and McCarran Airport for sixteen million dollars because of airspace on his property over at the property over McCarran Airport. Sixteen million dollars, and he's in charge of the fiscal affairs committee. He's the chairman that keeps signing all these checks every time uh, for wrongful death, excessive force, officers suing for discrimination, or what have you. I don't get it. Why would they want to put somebody like that on the county commission? And now he's going up for re-election. This guy sued the county for sixteen million dollars. I wow. mean, Trevon's Cole, Trevon Cole's life was only worth one point seven million dollars. But 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 County Commissioner Sister like got sixteen million dollars for for air wow. for airspace sixteen million dollars and he sits on the fiscal affairs committee that that that's these things are just 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 throws me off you know I, I cannot understand how somebody's mm-hmm. life is worth so much less than yeah, than airspace. air not not even property not even the land not even the dirt yeah, something it's just tangible, air yeah. who and, and he probably wasn't even going to build that high to begin with you know what I'm saying. It, it just, it just, I, I'm just fathomed by this whole thing. So, you you know about Jason Groves, the officer that uh, that the correction officer last week that 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 I'm was arrested. Well, I, I put him on blast. I contacted all the media, let them know all about Jason Groves. But folks, there's another officer. His name is Marcus Armando Wade. Okay, he was a five year. Uh, correction officer with the um, with the um, Las Vegas City Jail, and he's on the other side of the bars at the same place he works. He's on the other side of the bars. He was arrested last night for a DUI and speeding. And you know something? I'm going to talk about every single cop that gets arrested until Stanley Gibson, um, Stanley Gibson's killer, gets prosecuted for what he did. 
So if they want me to stop talking about cops getting arrested, which I think that that should be a public, there they should be a public um, mm, um, form, um, form that goes yeah. out to all the media, let all the media know if they want to find out who, what cops are in jail. Because according to Gillespie, he's telling me that he gets a daily report of all his cops getting incarcerated. So I found that to be interesting as well. Buford, do you have anything? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to uh, uh, Wilson's decision on uh, Kathleen Vermillion, he didn't exactly exonerate the trio for what happened. He said that the litigation privilege made it impossible to prove beyond a reasonable right. doubt that there was, in fact, extortion. Right. But he was troubled, I think, as many people were, with the actions of particularly Fierro, um, the publicist, and the lawyer who's in this case made the moment, right. I'm afraid. Right. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, and, and, you know, I definitely want to uh, commend and applaud uh, D.A. Wolfson because, you know, there's a lot of cases in front of him. And, uh, you know, I appreciate him taking the time to assess and evaluate all of them thoroughly, especially Stanley's case, yeah. and give it the attention, you know, it deserves. You know, you know, he does have a hard job because if he wants to be reelected or elected in, in this particular case because he was appointed, uh, he has to show up in front of the, the PPA, the PPO, the marshals, the La Las Vegas Metropolitan Police for endorsements and, and financial um, enhancements for his campaign. But I, 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 we need somebody that knows how to do the right thing because the people could see through all the BS. Right. Okay. And, 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 and Steve Wolfson, I don't believe he needs those endorsements because a lot of people would say if you don't have those endorsements, right, you maybe mean. you're doing something right. <laughs> you probably pissed one of those guys off. You're probably doing something right. That's why you don't have that endorsement. Yeah, and, and you know, I've read about a lot of rulings that he's made on different cases, and in my opinion, you know, clearly he's not looking to win a popularity contest. Yeah. I think he really has the best interest of Nevadans when it comes to his decisions. But he did clear a, a lot of cops um, in, in, in shooting incidents, mm -hmm. and when I read it and I, and I said, yeah, that that sounds about right. Those cops should be cleared because if somebody pointing a gun at me, I, I'm I'm gonna have to protect myself. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, you, you. And, and that's that's what I'm gonna have to. So I don't I don't have a problem with that, but I, I have a major major problem with Stanley Gibson. And if it's policy to to shoot an unarmed uh, a suspect in the back of the head that's pinned in the car, that's pinned in the car, then they should go after every single person that implemented that policy. They should go after every single person that wrote that policy, every single person that signed off mm -hmm. on that policy, and the sheriff should step down. Well, yeah, and you, you know, and you have to realize, I mean, if, if something like that comes to light and that's the ruling, you know, now you're looking at the ACL, you get involved right. in a lot of other, you know, organizations. Well, just like they did with uh, uh, Wanda Chambers over there in, in Henderson, the um, um, police chief over there. Apparently there was some policy um, that, that allowed her officers to kick people in the head, and, and she resigned. She stepped down, or whatever the case might be. She, Buford, about, she that's was about asked right. to resign, and she did. Um, because of that policy. Th well, several... Uh, it was a rather convoluted situation, but that was part of it, yes. Sir. Well, at least the diabetic victim is still alive. Stanley Gibson is dead, never going to yeah. come back, you know, and, and, and his death affect so many others in, within his family. So. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, I, I have officers uh, in my family and, uh, you know, friends and acquaintances, and that, that, that's a tough job. I mean, you can understand it being a veteran, right. you know, the, uh, the pressure and some of the dangerous situations you deal with. And after a while, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between who's who, you know, but being being a civilian and being ignorant of that because, I, right. I, you know, I'm not a vet and I haven't been a police officer, you know, I, I still say to myself, I want to go home to my family right. and whoever I'm confronting, whether it's I'm stopping them for a traffic ticket, you know, or a jaywalker or whatever, I want them to go home to their family, and, too. And you know what? And this is the same thing with, with military in the field. And you got military in combat field. You still have the rules of engagement you have to follow, okay? And, and, and you're still subjected to the Geneva Convention. You're, to, you're subjected to the Uniform Code of Military Justice. You're, you're even subjected to double jeopardy. And that's what we fight against as the Constitution of the United States. But military don't have that, don't have that luxury of, of, of they, wow. they, they, they get charged by a civilian and the military and for the military. same for the same incident. And, but then we have to know how to not shoot unarmed civilians. We have to know how to not shoot kids that are not threatening us. We have to know how to deal around that rules and engagement in combat, live in that's death, a lot to process live in death every single day. Okay? Yeah. A police officer's rules of engagement protect and serve. Why don't he protect or she protect and serve instead of 
want to kill unarmed civilians yeah, for because was, they want to go home. I, I could understand if their life is in danger, right. but if their life is not in danger, why don't the police academy train these guys and these women how to how to how to de-escalate people by using yes, communication and, 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 and maybe mm-hmm. use their hands, maybe teach them how to freaking fight. Well, they've, they've know, got they've, they've got tasers that shoot at you. You know, you know. Let me tell you an example. You're gonna think this is funny, but I, you know, on the on the jail on the jail it says um, no weapons allowed. Right. Mm-hmm. So I walked through the metal detector and I told I told a correction officer, I said, hey, I don't think I should be in here. And he goes, why? I said, it says no weapons allowed. And he goes, you got a weapon? I said, yeah, it's me. I'm the weapon. So why don't they teach cops how to fight, how to use hand to hand, how to wrestle, how to box, how to use some kind of martial arts instead of always worried about using a, a gun? I said, go get, get physical with them. Yeah, and they're going to say, well, you know, we got our gun. We got our handcuff. We got our taser. And I said, you know what? When, when we're in combat, we have an M16. We have sidearms. We have K-bars. And we still fight. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and you know, again, I'm... I, I haven't, you know, I haven't been an officer. I'm, I'm not a vet. I haven't been in a situation like that. I mean, but you know, just, just watching, uh, you know, as an outsider, you kind of like, wow, do you have to always use lethal force? I mean, you can shoot a person in the leg. You can shoot him in the arm. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and you know, not hit an artery. They, they study all that. You know, but it's like when you, when you're going for headshots or you're going for a hard shot. There's no coming back from that, man. Uh, it, it's protect and serve, you know, and, and, and somewhere along the line, I think that um, uh, we lose that, you know. I have not heard many people that have been uh, okay with uh, Officer Aravello's, um action. Right. It, it does stand out uh, from the others, and it's good that it's getting traction, I think. Yeah, and, and you know what? Good cops, they don't want to be around bad cops. So, And that's what I'm going to say. If you're a bad cop, you know, I, I think that uh, the department should just get rid of you, period. Instead of saying, well, you know, we got to retrain a new person. Just get rid of them. And once you charge them for the training, if they're a bad cop and you got to fire them, once you charge them for all that school and do a civil lawsuit against them, yeah. get the money back. Did you, know? you did you hear about um, the mentally disturbed homeless man about a week ago that was shot, I think, in Arizona 39 times? Yeah, I what, heard something yeah, about that. I, I saw the video. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, we're going to have to. Anybody got any, else, any other rants? No. Well, I just want to do a shout-out to Goodfellas Bail Bonds. If you're in jail, call 384-JAIL to get yourself out. This is Steve Sanson, Andre Haynes, and Buford Davis for Veterans of Politics. Don't go back first. Don't, <laughs> don't go away, folks. We're going to have John Bonaventura, the Las Vegas Township Constable. Are you a business owner struggling during these economic times? Please listen up. How would you like to put your business and services in front of every resident and business in the Las Vegas Valley for less than a penny per home? Yes, that's right. I said less than one cent per home and business. And how would you like to have a dynamic and exciting online presence with the major search engines? How about an online video for your business and a fully optimized website with absolutely no setup fee? Hi, my name is George. If you are interested in these and other services that can make your phone ring with clients and prospects, then call me at... 702-296-8394. Just call George at 702-296-8394. Thank you. Hey, listen up. If you're a military veteran, if you're related to a veteran, or if you know a veteran, you'll enjoy the Veterans Reporter Radio Show every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. With me, I'm your host, Chuck N. Baker. Every week... We will explore veterans' issues and we'll have guests who will talk about topics of interest to and about the veterans' community. And if you don't listen, you'll have to give me 20 push-ups. This public service announcement is brought to you by Veterans in Politics International. The Veterans in Politics mission is to teach, educate, organize, and awaken our veterans and their families to select, support, and vote intelligently for a better world and to protect ourselves from our own governments and a culture of corruption and to be the political voice for those in other groups that do not have one. There are too many homeless veterans and more help is needed from the VA. Every veteran service organization post should adopt a local homeless veteran. The funding of VA medical centers is inadequate and building a VA hospital in southern Nevada is moving at a slow 
pace. The budget has been flatlined for too many years. The VA is too quick to deny claims and too slow to help veterans gather records in support of claims. Local politicians ignore veterans and their issues. They perceive a lack of organization among their local veterans and that it won't hurt them at election time. Veterans too often vote party, not veteran issues. All veterans should vote in every election. The news media give inadequate coverage to veteran issues and events. You must send letters to the editor and voice this concern. Please contact your members of Congress and Senate and urge them to co-sponsor key legislation in supporting our veterans. Please support veterans in politics. And to get more information, go to www.veteransinpolitics.com. Back. This is Steve Sanson and Andre Haynes and Buford Davis with Veterans of Politics. We have live in studio John Bonaventura, who is the Las Vegas Township Constable. John, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Steve? I'm uh, good, John. Good afternoon. Could you tell us about yourself? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm the Las Vegas Township Constable, just like you said. Um, I'm a, uh, a native Nevadan. Uh, I went to... Uh, grade school high school here uh, i went to unlv um i have a, a degree from unlv in political science um been around a long time been in politics used to be a former assemblyman in the nevada state legislature and um you know i don't, I don't know what else you want to you want to know but be welcome to answer any questions. Well, you know what I, I wanted to say, but but before before my my co-hosts get into a question, and I wanted to say, um, thank you for beating Bobby Grunauer. I could not stand that man. Okay, and uh, he he might be a, a former Marine, but he called me a Viet Cong, and he called me the enemy, and it was a personal vendetta to get rid of him. Um, he says that illegal immigrants should have a constitutional right to be in this country. Um, that, that this guy hasn't had an audit on that office for over eight years, and then I had to call the county manager to get an audit done. I, 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 he, he was so arrogant. Um, when he walks, the sidewalk breaks because of all the weight of arrogance he carried. So, so Bobby Grunauer, Bobby G, nickname, whatever you want, he thought he was God gift to the Democratic Party. And when... You beat him. My drink spilled all over my shirt because I was so happy <laughs> that you won. Seriously. Well, I, I appreciate those compliments, Steve. And now you have a constable that will shake your hand. You know, I'm, I'm not going to not shake your hand. So, well, don't think it's all good because these questions might be a little hard for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to throw that out there. That was back what two years ago? That was two years. Well, about almost, a year. Almost yeah, two years ago. Because if you if you count for uh, during the election time. Let's go right to Buford Davis. Buford Davis. Hello. Hi, Buford. So how do you feel about the uh, the new ruling that just came in? Uh, it's it's a it's just an, now in effect uh, currently. You're talking about the Supreme Court, yes, uh, Supreme Court. rule that, um, o- um, that overturns the eight judicial district court. Right. Yeah. So you're uh, you're speaking about this uh, jurisdictional issue. Correct. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'll give you a little background on that. Uh, when I first uh, took office, um, uh, the Laughlin Constable, Mr. Jordan Ross, and uh, the Henderson Constable, Earl Mitchell, uh, were actively soliciting uh, business in the Las Vegas Township. I was getting a lot of complaints. Uh, these guys aren't trained as well as uh, as well as Las Vegas deputies are trained. Most of our guys are uh, post-category one, um, opposed to uh, a three or a two, which, you know, that's basically the... Uh, uh, the field of, of uh, the range of uh, post categories. Um, anyway, they came into the Las Vegas Township, and um, you know Jordan Ross even opened up an office, and he uh, he, he put uh, on their uniforms. They put Las Vegas Bureau. They had a an office right down the street. They were, at least they were charging mileage from uh, around the corner because uh, nobody's going to pay to serve a uh, a summons or a complaint and have uh, have them drive all the way from Laughlin. So anyway, we had this problem. I read the law, and the law said that uh, constables are elected in their townships, and they have to stay in their own townships. And, uh, you know, pretty much I said, well, I wonder why these guys are violating the law. So I, sp- I spoke with them, and uh, they said, well, we're not going to 
we're not going to uh, change what we're doing, you know, because they they get to keep their uh, their commissions, unlike the uh, Las Vegas township where I'm on an actual salary. So I said, well, we need clarification on this. Um, you know, I don't. Be- you know, they said, well, we read it one way, you read it another. So I said, okay, well, let's get a, uh, a legislative opinion from the legislature. So uh, one of the senators put in for a legislative opinion and came back and said the law is very clear. Uh, uh, Constables have to stay in their own townships. They're elected in their townships. They have to be accountable to the voters in their own townships. I mean, what would happen if, uh, say, uh, a Henderson constable comes in and and, uh, serves a notice or does an eviction or or something uh, and somebody gets hurt? And that person has no recourse. He can't vote against that Henderson constable. He can't vote against that Laughlin constable because they're out of their jurisdiction. So um, anyway, so we got the legislative opinion, and I thought, you know, hey, all right, now these guys are gonna are gonna listen to this because it's a you know it's a very strong opinion coming from the legislature. So uh, make a long story short, they went public and said they're not gonna they're not gonna go by it. They're not gonna listen to it. They're gonna keep doing what they're doing. So then um, I went and filed a, uh, a court case with the district court because they weren't going by it. So uh, district court judge uh, Ron Israel is- issued a preliminary injunction that they have to stay in their own townships and abide by the law. So, of course, they went up publicly again, and they said, well, we're, we don't agree with it. We don't think it's right. We want to keep uh, going in other people's jurisdictions, and we want to, uh, you know, bring business in from wherever we can, because, like I said, they they keep their own uh, their own money. So the more the more business they can generate, the more money they're going to make. Um, so then uh, they appealed it. They appealed it and uh, to the district court, and the district court upheld the preliminary injunction. After that happened, uh, they still didn't want to go by it, so they appealed it to the Supreme Court, State Supreme Court. The State Supreme Court um, answered that, and they said, "Well, we're going to uh, we're going to leave the uh, uh, you know the district court judge's decision alone, and we're going to leave the preliminary injunction in place." So in the meantime, um, they weren't happy with it. You know, um, they don't want to go by the law. They want to uh, make their own laws, pretty much. You know, the old cowboy uh, cowboy attitude where just the laws don't apply to them. So anyway, um, you know, a couple weeks have gone by. They went and filed another appeal to the state Supreme Court. This is their second appeal. And um, in the meantime, you know, the lawyers were starting to gather, and they're saying, hey, you know, we got an idea. I've, I've heard a couple lawyers come to me and ask me, to say, what if we... Uh, what if what if there's a uh, a lawsuit filed a class action lawsuit on all these foreclosures uh, that happened in the last couple of years and all these services and you know um, you know we could actually uh, hold up all the all this stuff and people can sue for being kicked out of their house and foreclosed on and the banks will go crazy so pretty much it would create havoc on the uh, on the uh, financial economy um, anyway uh, make a long story short. Um, you know, then we went in front of the county commission. I was trying to get them to pay for a $2,000 bond, uh, which we had to put up in order to keep the order in place. Um, the county commission uh, turned the bond down. Um, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Scow said that um, basically she was against it because uh, she had a problem going forward because uh, we don't want to encourage public uh, one public body to take legal legal action against another. But the fact is, Clark County is suing the state of Nevada for $102 million. Uh, this so it's ironic, huh? Yeah, it's ironic. ironic. Hypocritical. Exactly. Yeah, hypocritical. You, you, you know something, um, um, John I, Constable Bonaventura? I, I just, I want, I want to talk a little bit about the county commission because I, I know the county commission uh, brought you into their, their forum um, uh, a, f- a couple months ago, because of a video your your staff made, 
on on a well, uh, our, to a reality show. Yeah, our staff didn't make it. It was actually True TV. Right, right. They, well, they, yeah. they starred in there, so to speak. Whatever case, whatever the case might. Well, be. when I when I first took office, you know, there was actually seven or eight film crews that were well, going around with our people, well, and that you, was one of them. This so. is what I don't understand. How is it that the county commission drags you into the county chambers about that video, but yet stay silent? On the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Sheriff and his guys is killing people, unarmed civilians. And and when I ask when I ask um, selective members of the county commission, why do you go? Why why is it that you don't go after the Las Vegas um, County um, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Sheriff for his citizens killing people, or make a stand against it, or do a press release against it, or whatever the case might be, a press conference? They said to me that he's an elected official. So my comment is, then, why are you going after the constable, um, John Bonaventura, because he's elected official as well. So why do you go after one body of government but won't go after the other? And, and what's so ridiculous about the whole thing is that they're going after you because of this video, but yet they don't talk about the sheriff and his guys as killing unarmed civilians. I don't know what's more important, a freaking video or the life of, <laughs> of a citizen. You know, and, 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 and to add to it, you are self-esteemed. Your office does not um, take any tax dollars, okay? Absolutely. Your sure. office don't take any tax dollars. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, they take tax dollars. Matter of fact, two, two of the county commissions sit on the Fiscal Affairs Committee, which is Larry Brown and, and Steve Sisley, who's also the chair, okay? They write millions of dollars, about $6 million average for 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 any, anywhere from um, um, discrimination by, by one of the officers to wrongful death. And they don't have a problem with that, but yet they go after you. Why is it that they go after you and, and, and not for, for the sheriff, so to speak? I, I want to know that question. Well, you know, Steve, um, that's, a good, that's a good question, and, and I'm not sure why. I mean, especially I feel, I feel for all these, uh, all these families and these, uh, these people that have, uh, that have died. Um, you know, as you as you know, there's been 21 in custody deaths uh, over the last 12 months, um, and I share your concerns. Uh, um, you know, I don't know if it's just uh, you know trying to divert the attention from one place to another. Uh, you're right; we don't we don't uh, operate on any tax money. You know, um, our office doesn't, and uh, uh, I, I don't know really what the answer is to that, but. It's uh, it's kind of similar to like I said, you know, uh, when you got the commissioner saying, uh, or at least one or two of them saying that um, uh, they they don't want to they don't want to vote to pay a two thousand dollar bill um, to uphold the law because all all I'm trying to do is uh, enforce the law. You know, I'm an elected law enforcement officer, and I was elected to uh, to the Las Vegas Township Constable and the. The, the constable law says that constables are supposed to be constables in their own township. Well, I'm trying to enforce the law, trying to have a $2,000 bill paid. And then we get these comments like uh, we don't want to encourage uh, one public body to um, f- fight legal action against another. And meanwhile, the uh, the county commission is uh, suing the state of Nevada for $102 million. Yeah, I, I saw that, and it just didn't make any sense to me. John, we're going so to have to... So it's the same type of, it's the same type of thing. I, I don't know the answer to that, but um, keep on asking those good questions because, uh, you know, everybody appreciates those questions. John, let's take this caller. We have uh, Mike on the air, is it? Mike? Yes. Hey, how yes. you doing? Hey, pretty well. Do you have a, a question for the Las Vegas constable? Well, it's not necessarily a question. It's, uh, I guess it can be interpreted as a question, but um, even though uh, the Enterprise Fund... I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't say anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, even though the Enterprise Fund is not tax dollars, it, it still, um, you know, is basically a, a county fund, and it needs oversight. And I, I guess it's important to say it's not, uh, you know, John's money. It is, you know, indirectly... The uh, you know the, the, the community's money, but uh, you know my only comment today, and I'll and I'll actually I don't really know how to put it in a question, other than the fact that you know with everything that's happened uh, in your administration since you've taken office, John, um, I as a citizen I, I seriously question you know your judgment, your character, your experience level. 
I mean, over and over, it seems like you've made foolish choices and you've earned your poor reputation. And, and my, I guess my question is, what's next? Well, it's uh, pretty pretty good comments coming from you, Mr. Yepko. Uh, I know you ran for constable several times, and you, you weren't able to uh, to even get through the primary. But, um, you know, the people have spoken, and I'm the constable now. And as far as this enterprise fund goes, basically, you know, you should know this. Our office runs on, uh, on fees that we collect from the uh, users who come in and, uh, and pay for certain services that we provide. So we provide the services... The fees come in. The, uh, the 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 county takes all that money, including the net revenue, every single day. Unlike the other constables, where they just keep it all. So the 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 uh, the county, you know, to answer your question, the county the county uh, takes the money, puts it into this enterprise fund, and then every nickel that we spend is approved by the county, whether it be the county treasurer, the comptroller, the budgeting. Uh, we have to get uh, okay on every nickel that we spend out of that money. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Yep. Oh, it does. I just, I guess, you know, my question is, with everything that's happened uh, since you've taken office with, you know, I'm not going to sit here and list every single issue. I just, I, I've never seen in my life, and I'm 48 years old, I've never seen a public official uh, get more controversy and make more foolish choices uh, and more foolish uh, things than you've done. So uh, I guess my question uh, is, what's next? Uh, you know, Tom, what's next? Tom, Tom Collins, uh, Commissioner Collins, has uh, made headlines um, quite frequently with his bull uh, uh, attacking and injuring a uh, neighbor, uh, with him shooting up a tree, and uh, even before um, he even uh, uh, took the office, he was arrested for DUIs. And and, and, and and apparently I heard something. Um, I don't know if I'm correct on this statement, but I think there was a possible DV there somewhere along the line. So uh, he has taken uh, the, the media uh, pretty good as well. And, and if I sit here and I start thinking about more uh, elected officials, I, I'm, I'm sure I could find a lot more um, people that have uh, uh, took the office um, have been in the news a lot. So yeah, let me let me also say something. Uh, you know, it's not 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 uh, not defending John Bonaventura, no. by the way. Yeah, uh, let me say let me say something to uh, Mr. Yepko. I know you're um, you know you're probably going to run again next time. You, I can see uh, you know I read some of your blogs. Uh, it seems like you read the the paper every day. You you read uh, Mr. Mr. Sheneman's um, articles and you make your uh, your little posts. So I could tell that you're that you're out there actively campaigning. You know, early in the game, which it's your right to do as a uh, you know as a registered voter and a citizen. And uh, you know what I have to say about that is you know keep keep doing what you're doing. You know, it's not as easy as it looks to be an elected official. There's a lot of laws that uh, that aren't being adhered to. Uh, people talk about we need to change the laws. Uh, the laws don't need to be changed. People just need to go by what the law says. If the law said something different, then I would go by whatever it said. So you know, it's a hard job trying to uh, trying to trying to get everyone to uh, to adhere to the laws. You know, that's why you see a lot of this stuff. You see lawsuits going on. You see jurisdictional issues. Um, you know, the other thing is we have, uh, you know, we have a lot of employees. I still have 80% of my employees are still from the Bobby G. Hey John, John uh, you know what? I want to, I want to talk to you about your employees because, sure. um, uh, uh, there, there, you got a couple of your employees that, uh, well, one of them, um, did a sexual harassment, uh, uh, lawsuit. Um, another one did a racial discrimination or yeah, a combination a, of the two. Her boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> and then, um. You also fired um, two deputies that were veterans, and I don't, I don't really know. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you had good reason why you fired them. But are, are you, well, I want to ask you um, about the uh, the two the, the lawsuit that's pending. If you could comment on that a little bit, and I want to ask you if you're going to replace those two veterans that that you fired because you you know that the um, Obama administration give a tax break to any business that hire veterans, right? Yeah, I've already replaced those two veterans with. Uh, two, two veterans? Two more veterans. <laughs> yes. Oh, 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 you, you already done that? Oh, yeah, I've already done that. Oh, because I, I was just about ready to beat you up. No, but. I've already done oh, that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> one, of, one, of, one of the guys is, uh, you know, he, he just came out of the uh, out of the Marine Corps. Um, he All spent right. five years in the Marine Corps. Okay. And uh, he went through our law enforcement academy. I don't, you might want to get into that after this employee issue, but... Uh, Okay. Uh, we have a we have a nice law uh, law enforcement academy that we're running. There's a need for it. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but let's go back to this employee stuff. 
Um, well, I'm, I'm not done with your employee. Oh, yet. I'm sorry. No, I was going to. I was going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. I was going to. I was going to speak go about that. Okay. Uh, you know, these some of our employees are basically uh, every one of them that have been terminated or let go. Uh, they all want their jobs back. Every single one of them files a lawsuit because they want their jobs back. So, um, you know, that's one of the things. The other thing is they all know that we have a multi-million dollar policy that we're covered by insurance. Uh, any kind of any kind of uh, issues that come up with lawsuits or anything like that. Um, we have an insurance policy that covers those lawsuits. And, you know, insurance companies like to settle, and they know that. These are constables that deliver papers every single day, lawsuits, stacks and stacks of them. So they know. So they're doing it deliberately to, they know they're going to, if they file something, they, they know they, they Yeah, they know they have a chance to maybe win some money because whether or not they're right or they're wrong, you know, uh, once the attorney bills get up to, to a certain amount, uh, I don't have any any control over it the insurance company says you know what uh the bills are getting too high maybe we need to settle this and they all know that and and so you know that's why every employee that gets terminated uh files a lawsuit because they know about that insurance policy they knew about it before i took office and these are people that uh that were employed there before i took this office these were uh people that are under bobby g and and i and there is reasons i can't get into all the reasons because there's still investigations right. going on but um, there's there's reasons why they were terminated, and a lot of their a lot of their lawsuits are lies and, and falsehoods, and uh, you know they're absolutely not true. So uh, that's about all I can get into on the uh, on the employee. All right, Buford, you, know. you got a question for the constable? A uh, couple quick questions. How many employees do you have roughly? Uh, we have about sixty employees, if you count the uh, the county employees, okay. which are uh, part of our office okay. also. Um, I was wondering, um, with Laughlin and Henderson, how many service orders are they taking from you, or have they in the past? Do you have any idea? Well, we uh, we did an estimate. Hold, hold, hold on a second. Mike, Mike uh, we're going to thank you for your uh, comments. We're, we're, you can still stay on the line and listen if you like. Okay, thank you. I, uh, I will do that. Thank you very much. Okay. Go, go ahead, John. Um, like I said, we, uh, you know, we, we do have uh, a fairly large... Uh, large employment force uh and you you asked me a question of uh how much do i think that the other constables were uh were taking well i mean we have estimates anywhere from uh 200 to a half a million dollars a year um you know since they've been doing that and and you know one of the funny things is er earl mitchell uh the henderson constable he keeps saying i've never solicited anything every time i go to an attorney's office i was with uh an attorney yesterday and uh, he told me, oh, yeah, these guys came here wearing the suit. They tried to get us to, uh, they, they solicited the whole building. And, you know, they, they, he just keeps denying that they're actually out there soliciting. But, uh, but that's what they're doing. And, you know, during the injunction, the injunction's been in place now for, uh, for, for at least uh, a couple weeks. And, um, you know, we've, we've uh, caught them serving papers. And we've, uh, uh, we've seen where they're actually certified certified mailing stuff thinking that that gets them around the injunction but but the the latest thing with the uh, getting back to that the supreme court the supreme court actually stayed the injunction now because i you know my personal opinion is that you know it's going to create havoc just to you know some of these attorneys want to sue for all these all these services that were done in the past which I, I don't think i don't believe in that either i don't think we should further uh you know ruin the ruin the economy and the in the real estate area and stuff like that so I, I it might be a good thing that the stay is is uh is in place on top of the injunction injunctive order but we're still going to court and i'm looking forward to having this whole issue settled uh, i want clarity and one way or the other we need to know what the interpretation of the law is and no one seems to be able to give us an answer it's been over a year i've asked for the uh for the opinion from the DA's office, now, you know, the legislature, of course, we know they came out, and the judge, you know, cited uh, the same interpretation as that we've been interpreting. So we're going to see, you know, coming up in the next couple months, we're going to know. Uh, hopefully, we'll know exactly uh, the clarity of this law. Do you feel like the county would be better served to contract from its eleven jurisdictions uh, to a lesser number of of um, constables? Um, you know, there's two. There's two schools of thought on that. Um, when you have when you have it diversified as it is now, uh, as long as you have an you know you have an office in in Laughlin or Good Springs or 
you know the county's pretty big so uh, it would be it'd be it'd be kind of an injustice to to just have one unless you had offices in every in every township because you know it serves a purpose you know somebody in in Laughlin which is you know an hour away to an hour and a half away they don't have to drive to Las Vegas to get something served uh they just go around the corner and they they pay their fee and they they have it served um so there's like I said there's two schools of thought on that and um I I really don't have an opinion one way or the other Do you have a background in law enforcement John Yes I do I I used to work for the uh the the um Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice. Um, I did many jobs in there. I started out as a regular correctional officer. I was a senior officer. Um, I was a legal technician. Um, I ran R and D. Um, so I, I did that for uh, for about eight years. I went to the uh, Glencoe, Georgia. It was my law enforcement academy, one of the largest in the nation. Uh, Government Law Enforcement Training Center. That's what it stands for. And uh, that's where I did all my training with the FBI and CIA and the marshals, and you know that's that's where they had all that. So I do have background in in law enforcement. Um, and, and what what kind of training your deputies are supposed to have? Uh, all our deputies are uh, either category two, which is post uh, category two is there's actually three categories. One is more like your uh, your correction officers. Right. I mean uh, number three. The number two is is just. Uh, you know, a regular police officer, but if if you want to go up, be above and, and beyond, and what, what, and be what the, is it? What is it called to to carry a sidearm as a wearing the uniform as a constable? Well, what what kind of um, schooling you have to go through? You have you have to be uh, uh, certified by the state of Nevada. All right. Um, is a category so let, two or a category one? Let me ask you one. about one of your employees, Lou Tuman. Sure. Is 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 he uh, post certified? Because he carries a sidearm. Is yeah. He? Well, the the uh, you know the the law states that um, you know if you do deputize somebody, uh, you do well, have what NRS code is that? I don't know the exact. So it's, you, not, it's not NRS. It's well, actually, it's um, is it is it a is it's two eighty nine NRS. So, it's in so, the, so NRS he, he he can carry a weapon in a courtroom because <laughs> um, I'm 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 getting word that he carried a weapon, a sidearm, in a courtroom. Yeah. Um, you know that that's probably not true because um, I know he did go into the courthouse with a weapon. And could, he, could he do that? I mean, he's yeah, not, yeah, he could do that. He could do but, that. But he's not even post certified. Well, he's um, he's within his he's within his year, and also he's got well, a what, I, uh, concealed I thought, weapon permit. But that doesn't that doesn't right, carry over right. to the Th- peace that officer. That doesn't carry over to the. Yeah, to and the and the he peace said that for ten years because I got my concealed weapon permit, and, and I can't carry a weapon in the courtroom. Yeah, um, exactly. th- this is I don't I don't even do th- that. This is I what mean, I, this I could is, I could carry a weapon is, in the this courtroom. This is this is what I, I I've been told. I've been told that uh, Mr. Tuman is over that year certification that he cannot carry a weapon. He cannot carry a weapon in a courtroom. He cannot he cannot go in a courtroom with a weapon and he cannot walk around the streets with a weapon because he's passed his year. And and if, and and a judge told me that if she would have known that he was past his year, she would have arrested him on the spot. So maybe you probably want to um um think about Tuman with a weapon. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I, no, I understand that. And, because uh, I was told that if they knew about that, yeah, they would have arrested you're him. You're talking about. And we went to court on uh, one of these uh, preliminary injunction hearings. Right. Uh, I was there, and and uh, Mr. Tuman was there, and uh, at the time he was not past his year. I know his uh, his time. Uh, his time is way expired now. Uh, no, it's not way expired. It expires. It expired a couple of days after his birthday. His birthday was last week. Okay. So I'm going to have to check into that. I'm okay. glad you brought that up. Um, now, as far as wearing a sidearm, open carry. This is an open carry state. Um, but, but he shouldn't. But he can't, if but he's he passed certification or, or passed that year, he shouldn't be wearing the deputy's uniform and and carrying a sidearm. Yeah, he's not wearing a deputy's. He's actually wearing a suit now. So, okay. okay. So anyway, so that that uh, you're talking about the uh, the actual court hearing that we had, and uh, myself as a constable. I mean, I could carry a weapon anywhere I want, but I don't. I mean, it's right. it's disrespectful. Uh, to me, if I was a judge and I was uh, having a hearing uh, regarding law enforcement officers and they all showed up carrying guns, I wouldn't be too happy as a judge. You know, I've, I've got relatives that are judges. My cousin's a judge, you know, and I could put myself in their shoes. So when I do go to court, I don't, I don't carry my gun. I don't wear a gun. 
Now, Tooman did have a gun when he went to the courthouse, and there was some other uh, peace officers there from some other some other deputies from other townships that also had their guns on it. But but they they, now, were, minute, but they weren't past their year. Wait, wait, I mean, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying all those all those guys. The judge told the bailiff that right. n- he didn't want none of those guys right. having right. guns in his yeah, court, I, so they all had to go I, I, downstairs I, and check and their and weapons, check, well, whether or not they were right. post or well, not. Well, 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 this is this is what I was told. I was told that because Lou Tooman was not post certified for one and he was over his year for two. He wasn't over his year, Steve. Let me just they, get they, that straight. That's what I was told. He well, was you're over told his wrong because he okay. wasn't he over his year. No, he was not over his year. Okay. He okay. might be over his year right now today, but he okay. wasn't over his year so during they, that they, hearing. They, they told me if they would have known that they would have put him in cuffs. Right. Well, like I said, he was a good thing. He wasn't over his year, so <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to save you from yeah. bailing him out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's you know? funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got you. Buford? Where does it stand now with the um the border question. I know that um, initially uh, the was it the Laughlin, mm-hmm. Mr. Brown uh, called a bunch of crap. The um, decision, the legislative decision. Clearly, there's uh, difference of opinions there still. Yeah. Well, uh, you're talking about Constable um, Herb Brown from yes. North Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, he wasn't happy with the decision because he does serve a lot of. Uh, services in the Las Vegas Township, probably 10% of his revenue comes from serving outside of his township. Uh, he wasn't named in the lawsuit because he wasn't, you know, there was no proof that he was actually a- actively soliciting in the Las Vegas Township. He wasn't opening up an office. He didn't have his guys running around with uniforms hey, isn't that Isn't that something I hate to stop you right there? The one that's closest to you. <laughs> which is North Las Vegas is not solicited in the Las Vegas Township jurisdiction. Yeah, do you find that odd? <laughs> I, I do. Yeah, I do find that would find that odd. Uh, you know, of course, he's not he's not happy that he's going to lose business because people do actually go to North Las Vegas and 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 deliver a, a, oh, okay. a paper and say, "Hey, can you deliver this for me? I only live right down the street, and the guy that I'm suing lives over off of uh, you know Eastern or something. So he right. doesn't want to drive to the Las downtown and and file it. So he goes right down to the uh, to the uh, North Las Vegas guy, and, and uh, Herb Brown accepts it, and, and he uh, he serves it. And so, but we got to get back to to the law. I mean, the law is the law. If the law says you stay in your own township, you have to be accountable to the voters that voted for you. What NRS is that? That's NRS uh, two two five eight zero seven zero. Yep, that's it. Yep. Okay. Is yep. it uh is it is it legal from a constable? In an, well, now it's illegal. Let me rephrase my question. If I, I, I live in Las Vegas, okay? Yes. And if, if I was served by, say, the constable from Laughlin, uh, the paperwork they served to me, would that be admissible in court if the constable is not allowed to legally serve me that? Um, it probably would not. It would probably be an illegal service because uh, a constable in another township uh, is not a peace officer outside of their township, according to the legislative opinion, according to the district court um, you know, so basically they are violating the NRS. They're not allowed to serve any papers outside of their township. So you would have some kind of case if you got served something by another constable in another jurisdiction and, uh, and you were living, you're a Las Vegas resident, you live in the Las Vegas township, uh, you would have uh, some kind of grievance. Yeah, because, uh, um, you know, it, it makes me think of... Uh the 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 former the former police officer that had the process serving company who went to jail and it turned into paperwork that you know they didn't serve so they're uh oh oh let, let me let me let me say something real quick um, would the constable's office consider pickups for bonds after they're in warrant you you mean for like traffic violations uh, warrants for traffic or traffic warrants for or, whatever or, or skips on a uh, bail. Uh, well, we used to do that, Steve. Um, when I started office, they were, uh, you know, they were getting two hundred dollars a warrant. The law says you're only allowed to get forty eight dollars. W- would you consider doing that again? I would consider it if they changed the law and made it where we wouldn't lose money doing it. Um, you know, if if I well, was, what happened if the what happened if the the bail bomb picks up the tab, but they want you to go out there and, and uh, pick up. We can't a, do, uh, by 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 NRS statute. We're only allowed to collect forty eight dollars, and that's it. Okay. Uh, you know that's a whole other whole other thing that we can go into from the previous administration. They were actually uh, doing something. Would you different consider than changing that, that? Would you consider? Yeah, I did. I, last session we put a bill in for that, and the legislature heard that bill. Why don't we try that again? 
and we could try it again. We put a bill in for it. There was no no uh, okay. opposition, and it, it didn't it didn't go through. To make a long story okay. short, so we're still trying to trying to get that through. Maybe next session. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sanson, uh, for inviting me, and everybody, all you gentlemen that are here. I appreciate your uh, uh, hospitality. That's John Bonaventura, who is the Las Vegas uh, Township Constable. This is Steve Sanson, Andre Haynes, and Buford Davis, Veterans in Politics. Until next week. Across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston. Views and opinions expressed on this program were those of the hosts and guests and did not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company.